Hello and welcome back everybody. Today I have a special idea for my next challenge and I thought about to show you guys the way to play with thumbs and the way how to dominate with thumbs. And also I want to show you how I play and especially where I play. And I wanna this this time I wanna focus on the begin and the end and I will cut the video in two parts so I can explain you my steps, especially how I play in Pochinki and my pathing in Pochinki. So you can see how you do it, especially if you're outnumbered like in this game. This game is uh, a solo versus squad on Erangel on North American server, this time TPP, because I thought you guys uh, also play TPP and the majority of players play TPP. So since I even played TPP in the Star Challenge, and I still reminded myself of the mechanics. I thought, yeah, why not? Let's go for it. And surely it's something uh, different this time. So yeah, for the begin, I always drop at the southeast end of Pochinki because this part has, in my opinion, the safest and best loot. You always get guaranteed assault AR or SMG rifles, which you need especially to combat people in Pochinki. Also, you mostly get uh, armor and helmet. Uh, which is also very important to get. The next reason why I drop here is because, of course, you can only get uh, attacked from one side, that's from northwest or west to north side, because on the southeast to south side and east side, there is no houses and no one will drop there to 99%. There's maybe two buildings, but no one will, will drop there. Those houses are the best ones to loot because they have, as I said, in my opinion, the best loot in Pochinki. And I will explain you another video how the loot spawning works, so you will also understand why I always choose this part. So first, I looted here those buildings, of course, focused on getting armor and like full armor. That means body vest and helmet, which I got already. Like basically perfect because I appreciate Uzi always because Uzi is one of, in my opinion, one of the best shot, uh, early game weapons. You can get if you if enemies have barely armor here i killed somebody and there was another one shooting with shotgun i barely survived it and he was trying to push push me but he didn't enter the room for my luck so i was covering the door that he doesn't push me but i escaped from the other side from the left side door because i didn't know where he is he showed up luckily and I put him down so yeah also this how i play I, use a lot of no scope because I was used to play critical ops and modern combat in past and, and those games are no scope as an uh, no scope focused games and it's essential to be a beast on no scope mode. I basically could easily take the skills I, uh, I learned from those games and adapt them to PUBG Mobile. This is why I was always one of the dominant players in PUBG Mobile in Europe and on NA and I was always uh, able to keep up with like the best players on the leaderboard. <clears throat> so here I found an, a UMP. A UMP is in my opinion also one of the best weapons. In general SMGs are so good for Pochinki because they have less recoil, they have incre incredible stability and they have super good damage on short range. So it is a really good weapon to abuse even if you have no attachments. In my opinion a lot better when, than M4. Um, so if I find it of course I will take it. Here I pick up an M16 because I also want like a weapon I can scope in and burst really good and burst people down. So here I still sticked on my part uh, on my Pochinki side because I wanted to check out my environment where enemies landed because this was a hot drop and many people were here. So I didn't know where like where all the enemies are and since I'm alone you always need to keep that in mind that you don't rush stupidly and always take care about the environment and notice uh, if it changes. Like here in my in my pathing, I always across the street or to 80 person across the street if I'm alone and loot the houses here because once again I I can be pretty sure that there is no enemies coming from southwest side because there is no buildings and you always need to keep it in mind that if you play or in or if you play outnumbered, you shouldn't take whip spots. Uh, you can get shot from all angles because this is not good. You can backstab, getting backstab easily, camped easily, and many squads at once can sandwich you, and this is not good for your survival.
of course. <laughs> so yeah, I just kept an eye around my environment here, was looking around, took me three times and used it for my M16 burst. Here I quickly swapped my sensitivity because I forgot I didn't select any sensitivities for third person and I had to make it a little bit higher on the free time scope. I use around 40 to 50 percent. It doesn't matter if it's one person less or more, that is like you won't even notice that a lot. So here I boost it up because being fast is very important, but you're not slow and you recover health if you're getting hit from many sides and you don't have time to recover yourself by using a medkit or first aid. So I spot the first squad here in Pochinki or the next squad. Um, Baver on the houses and very not bad players because he peeked and he was also using the third person snake tactic but he just basically spots me while lying down on the ground. So I went into the house to get him, get a bad, better angle on him. So I get height advantage and maybe can like can see his head from a better position, but here I couldn't. So since he probably spot me running up the house, I was jumping down again because this is what he don't expect because he still thinks that I'm upstairs. Here I hear it of an enemy coming, but it was just a bot. I didn't take put my focus on him because I didn't want to get flanked from another side. He was killed already and I saw that guy he hit me again. First he wanted, but he also hit me, so I tried to burst him get a lucky like a lucky free fire burst, but he peeked again and healed. Was healing. So I did the same and recovered myself because I don't wanna fight a full squad on at least two people with uh, like just 40 HP. Here I just peeked through the window, through two windows, because this is a lot of cover and you barely can hit, he barely can hit me even if he uses M4. He must be incredibly accurate and even the good players, they won't you hit a lot, so you're in advantage because you have like triple cover and they need to shoot you from So here I saw him jumping and I already expected that they will push me. What happened then? because they both tried to push me, they got my new position. I changed my location again, so they cannot see me where I was and like predict my next move from my old location. And here I did first per first person prone to see their location that I'm not getting hit, but I already noticed I'm getting pushed. So I just kept an eye if there's another one coming and let those two guys push me. Then I tried to smoke. For the, for, for the case that I had to cross the street because it would be more than three people. Browned again. They didn't know my exact location yet and then I had to I had to fight them because they were pushing me and they were behind the blue house. I saw one of them and he, I just killed him. And I knew he was steaming was also there because he ran. They're both dead. <clears throat> Getting some headshots in here. And I was looting quickly. Here got a six times and a mini 14. First I was uh, not sure if I take the Mini 14, but since I'm alone and I needed a long range weapon and M16 got like brutally nerfed uh, for long range, I decided to pick up the Mini 14 because like in past M16 used the most used to be the most uh, overpowered weapon in the game by far. You could use it close range, long range, burst and you could handle the recoil so easy because and also it had like no spread the bullet spread was so low so it was like a laser beam you literally could burst down a whole squad with m16 and five times but they nerfed it already three times and they will also nerf it like at least two more times it is still this the weapon is still broken as fuck uh, but i since i'm alone i really needed that accurate long range weapon and mini 14 is by far one of the best snipers if not the best sniper right now because of high deep and accurate DPS damage. So I took the car and left Pochinki here, I guess, if I'm right. Yeah, first I did third person peeking before, yeah, I did it before uh, I go. So I'm not getting shot from somebody from the other side of the street who maybe just camps in the house and third person peeks me and just gets an easy kill on me because I didn't take the attention here. I just checked everything out here and even got a sniper compensator, what was really good for me. And after I conf could confirm that Pochinki is clear, or at least clear for so far, I just uh, went out here and... No, I didn't even... No, I didn't even drive away, not yet at least. I wanted to 
check out Hold Pochniki to be sure that there is no one left. And first looted those buildings and my next pathing is that I literally do a circle around Pochinki on the edge of Pochinki. I just loot the houses on the edge and go through them. I just try to avoid the middle of Pochinki the most of the times. If I don't know where's the enemies, especially at the beginning, later on you can go there if you, if you think it's clear, but especially in third person you must be careful because snakes are everywhere and uh, they love buildings and also they love the ground as we know. So you need to be careful that you don't camp away, get camped away here. Here I could confirm that Pochinki is so far pretty clear and I was just, I kept looting here cross the street here because I didn't see anyone moving and no one was here. Then I just went to the middle building. This is a good spot to see if there's anyone around the buildings if the number of players is already lowered. If you know you won't get sandwiched. You can go here guy and kill them. Picked up with adrenaline surge and finished him. And there was one more guy coming. Um, from behind the building, northeast somewhere, and I killed him as well. Now I go to the drop because I saw it randomly coming down and I smoke my path to the drop because I don't want to get sniped away from like the hillside or somebody who's prawning in the grass. You never know who's at the drop first and it is, or you're always an advantage if you have a smoke wall between you and the enemy. I also smoke the drop if I get in range because if somebody pushes you like a guy tries here in my situation you're in advantage if you're smoked because he can't see you and uh, if you're at the right angle in the smoke you will just finish him off because he didn't push me in close range what was uh, good for me because he also could have went on the other side across the ridge so he could have just came to close range and had cover but luckily he didn't and I was killing him with UMP also why I didn't pick up the AUG immediately even though it's my absolute favorite weapon on all, of all AR weapons, uh, I didn't want to select my attachments for it because I didn't know if it's more than one guy and if they're pushing me instantly and it's always better to have a weapon which has all attachments if you have the choice than a weapon who has no attachments. So what I did here was I killed him first and afterwards when I noticed everything is safe I picked it up. Also, why I'm picking up, why I always pick up the AUK A3, in my opinion, one of the best weapons in the game, if not the best weapon. It is so stable, you can use it on every range, on in every mode, because it's the best all-rounder weapon, in my opinion. It has barely recoil, it has only vertical recoil, it is good to hip-fire, to spray, to single-tap, on long-range, on mid-range, on short-range. It is super accurate on short-range if you no scope, it is super good on mid-range if you scope in and use for example 4 times and you even can suppress enemy's position with 6x on up to 200 meters because this weapon is so stable and has no horizontal recoil at all or barely. So it is re a really good option to use this weapon. It is really powerful and that's why I always pick it if I can pick it. So here I just checked out if the house is clear and picked uh, looked for some more attachments which I did. And yeah basically that was it for the first part of my new challenge or journey called thumbs up the way how to dominate as thumbs player i hope you like it and i would appreciate a like um, on, on the video and let let me know if you enjoyed this com content and if i should bring more or if you have something 
to criticize on my video and I can improve on this. Let me know on all this. I'd be glad for this. And yeah, can't wait to do the next episode, the part two of the video. Make sure to check it out when it comes out and yeah, see you guys for next video.